Hi Lana, hello and welcome once again to Lana's Coach. So we're going to look at what is a computer bus, commonly referred to as system bus. So we have different categories of uh, buses that you can discuss as far as computers are concerned. But today I'm simply going to understand the various types of uh, system buses that we have. Of course, uh, we are going to introduce the concept of a bus and understand uh, what is a computer bus. Now, as you can see, there's a diagram here. Actually, it's a background image uh, showing some uh, kind of components, right? Now, these components are actually integrated together uh, under one particular uh, circuit board known as the motherboard. So, the motherboard actually uh, hosts different computer components that needs to communicate together. So, that's the need of a bus. So, a bus is like a wide road or a narrow road so the wider the bus the more data can be transferred from different components or the faster the uh, the data transfer it the narrow the bus uh, the little or few uh, data that can be transmitted from one component to the other so we're going to identify this particular main system buses and actually identify their pros and cons right so a more clear picture is this one this is a motherboard showing the various components so you can see the south bridge north bridge now all these components ladies and gentlemen need to talk to each other and for the communication to happen we need a bus right so a bus is a set of wires or rather uh, is a way of how different devices can push or rather pass data from one or pass signal from one component uh, to the other so ideally we can't exhaust talking about the different types of or the different components of the computer uh, motherboard but you're going to identify like for example you can see the pci slots this is one of the system buses that you're going to look at then you have the agp agp is another uh, system bus that we need to understand and of course we have the processor bus the one that allows uh, the processor to communicate. When talking about the system bus, also we need to factor in the south bridge, right? So this is a chip set that actually ensures that there's a well coordination of a uh, communication flow. Uh, and of course, you have the north bridge. North bridge is closer, is normally closer to the uh, processor. So it's very important to understand uh, these crucial uh, system components when you're talking about communication. So, as I'd mentioned, the components inside the, your computer talk to each other in different ways. And of course, we have the internal components I've already mentioned. We, can, we, could, we could see uh, the memory, you could see we have uh, the various connectors, the IO ports, right? IO ports simply means the input output ports at the back of the, uh, the back of the computer. So all these creates a need of having some kind of buses and that's why we need to understand uh, the various categories of uh, computer buses so as i mentioned a bus is a set of wires that is used to connect the different internal components of the computer right ideally because we need to transfer uh, data as well as the addresses amongst them so apart from the system bus that we're going to look at we also have the data bus Ideally, the main function of the system bus is to ensure that data is transmitted. So, data bus here is used to transfer data amongst the different internal components of the computer. So, the data bus here can be determined by the width. That's why we started having the 4-bit uh, data bus system. We had the 8-bit data bus system. We came to 16-bit, 32, 64 and uh, more advancement has brought forth uh, 128 bit bus system and so on and then we ha have the way of allocating uh, this data in different memory addresses so when we read and write data in these different memory addresses we require the address uh, bus so kindly factor in these other buses apart from the ones that you're going to mention so to bring this particular discussion uh, to the right path let's look at this particular diagram so you can see that the data is being transmitted from different parts 
more so the input devices to the main memory and of course you have the control mechanism that has the dotted lines all these lines be it red or uh, blue represent the data bus of or how the data is being transmitted from one part of the computer to the other so ideally this is a kind of how the processor functions and this could represent one system bus known as the processor bus of how processor actually fetches data from uh, the main memory and coordinates the instructions that are being pushed from the input devices and how this particular output devices receive these particular signals. So this is ideally how we can consolidate the understanding of the data bus. But talking about the system bus, right? Because this is the main uh, agenda of having this particular tutorial. So the system bus is actually the heart of the motherboard, right? That allows the various components to send uh, signals between themselves. So as you can see, uh, from this particular diagram, you can see I've already mentioned the processor system bus. As you can see, it is the bus that coordinates all the activities within the processor uh, between the processor, the main memory, and the input-output devices. The other type of bus that we're going to discuss is the AGP, right? Accelerated Graphics Port System Bus, right? And of course, we have the commonly used uh, system bus known as the PCI system bus. So peripheral component interconnect is another one that we're going to look at. It is the new version uh, that most computers use. And of course, you have the early version, which is the ISA uh, system bus. So these are types of system buses that we need to understand. Because someone is going to ask you within this particular motherboard, which kind of system bus uh, is there. So ideally, we have the three main system buses that is the ISA the PCI and the AGP and of course you're going to mention others but these are the most crucial ones right so let's look at the uh, the most outdated right the ISA bus known as the industry standard architecture points to take home from this is that it had some key performance issues because of its speed right so it couldn't actually support the new devices that are being uh, brought forth so we need to we had to replace this ISA bus. Of course, it uh, had uh, the transfer rate of eight megahertz, right, per second. It could only support eight a uh, sixteen bit uh, bus width. We also had the eight bit uh, bus width. So this one could not really uh, give uh, more. Uh, of, of course, more it could not, couldn't support the many devices that are, be, are being used nowadays within the computer so it had it had to be phased off so we we had the 8-bit ISA bus we had the 16-bit right so the speed was the issue then we have the PCI peripheral component interconnect so it's more popular compared to the ISA the speed has improved as you can see it supports up to 33 megahertz so it has a 32-bit bus address system. It can also handle the 64-bit uh, bus system. So the good or the advantage of the PCI is that it offers the bus mode, right? So it has enhanced the performance generally on how the input and output devices uh, communicate. It can transfer information very, very fast. It also offers high bandwidth options, right? So you can have speeds up to 66 uh, megahertz, of course, even uh, much better than this. So these are the advantages of the PCI. It improved performance from the ISA option. So it also supports newer devices that uses the plug and play, right? It offers additional expansion slots, right? So if you had to add different cards to your system, uh, PCI provides that particular. Uh, option. So yes, uh, compared to the ISA, PCI actually is the most recommended uh, for the current uh, computers. And of course, we have the accelerated graphics port. Now, uh, why did we need to have the AGP? Now, AGP was brought to actually uh, support the video or the graphics component of the computer. So 
it was established that the processor alone could not handle a lot of the video processing uh, requests or the graphics requests, right? So there was need to have a standalone uh, kind of uh, a bus that is going to handle all related video and graphics uh, process requirements, right? So that it could not overwhelm or it could actually uh, relieve the main processor from these additional processing activities. So yes, uh, it is more or less the same as the PCI, but it was meant for video uh, related processing work. So with the need of the video bandwidth, so it, there was the need to bring on board this particular uh, bus. So it's commonly referred to as a port, but ideally it is a bus. So this was manufactured by the Intel. Intel are the people who came up with it. So I've already mentioned that the issue of video memory brought the need to, to have this particular uh, AGP. So when we talk about the accelerated graphics port, we see that it had additional advantages that was brought uh, uh, that was brought that was brought forth as far as the introduction of the video processor uh, is concerned. So ideally, when you have a PC that is uh, that requires a use of graphics or uh, playing of games, right? So AGP brings this particular uh, advantage. So it isolates the video subsystem from the rest of the PC. So AGP is a game changer when it comes to a use of a video or playing of games. So here. It also has almost the same speed as the PCI, but ideally this is just isolated for the what? Uh, for the video uh, memory. So the speed here is the same as the PCI, like it has the 33 megahertz, right? Now, we also need to understand other uh, different buses that were brought forth, but they came shortly and they disappeared right because of their limit so this is an old motherboard as you can see uh, of course it's an extended technology motherboard it only runs on the ISA bus 8 bit so he, this particular motherboard supports a very slow uh, bus system known as the ISA so we can see also the jumpers were to the configuration were to be done by the jumper and it was only limited to one megabyte of memory. So this is an old technology, right? Then also we have the processor system bus, which actually coordinates the communication between uh, the various components with the processor, right? Normally it's, it is close to the south bridge or com uh, to the north bridge, so we call it the front bus uh, system. So primarily this coordination of processing requirement happens between the bus, uh, happen between the processor and the north bridge and the main memory and the cache memory. So you have to understand that within the processor, there are closer components such as the main memory and the cache memory. Now these are type of computer memories that allows uh, the processing of instruction. So cache memory stores frequently accessed instructions, whereas main memory is a bit far uh, from, uh, the uh, from, the main mem uh, from the main processor. So this uh, brings on, both, uh, on board the need to have a processor system bus. So ideally, as we talk about the different types of buses, remember that the processor system buses offers high speed because of the very many coordination between the processor and uh, the connected components. So we have also talked about the AGP system bus. Normally it has a very uh, funny color. So you can ha you can see it is a brown color, right? So it's used for video and it's connected to the North Bridge. So the North Bridge is a chipset that assists the processor to indirectly communicate with other components, more so the AGP system bus. So the North Bridge here assist the processor in coordinating other additional uh, processing activities. 
So we also had the PCI system bars, normally white in color, as you can see them. So we have already seen that they offer 32-bit bars, and they are the newest. Yeah, we can say they are the newest uh, within the computer world, and they can always offer greater speed. We also looked at the ISA system bars. You can see they are black in color, right? It only supports 8 bits and 16 bits bar, a bus. And they are no, never, they are no, no longer supported in the new, uh, newer uh, motherboard. So we can always refer to them as obsolete system. But ideally, there are other computers that are still using the ISA bus system bus, right? So we also need to understand the expansion uh, buses that you can always use, right? So we, apart from the ISA, we had different other category of ISO or expansion of uh, IO buses. So ideally, apart from the ISA PCI, we also had the MCA. We also had the VESA. We also had the PCMI, uh, the PC card. We also had the IE, EI or ESA card. We also had the VESA. Now, these other additional expansion IO buses are part of the system buses, but they are obsolete in that they are overtaken with time in terms of uh, speed and the processing capabilities. So we'll just mention them, but ideally they are not uh, used within the current uh, computer system. So we talk about the We've already looked at the ISA. You can see it is black in color, and these are the expansion cards, right? So the expansion cards that can be used within the uh, the ISA bus are as shown. You can see the one that supports the 8-bit and the one that supports the 16-bit, right? So they're normally black in color. It's very important to identify. And we have the micro channel, the MCA. This is another expansion card that was brought forth but they were not compatible with the ISA cards. Yeah? So this was a product of the IBM. So it used the 16-bit and the 32-bit uh, card. <coughs> Sorry. Then we also need to understand that it's brown in color. You can identify it, but rarely will you uh, find it in the current computer system. We also have the extended industry architecture. Now this one was to support or to advance uh, the ISA requirements from 16 uh, to 32 bit, but it was not actually uh, viable or it didn't work well with the current uh, computer system. So it came to be absolute because there was new uh, bus that was introduced and that was the PCI, right? So the yeah, extended ISA didn't uh, actually uh, work for long so it came for a short while and it left the market right then we had the video electronics standards association uh, this is another card it's known as the VESA now VESA came to uh, to actually carry out the functions of the AGP right so it offered some kind of the video subsystem uh, processing requirements so again it faded very, very fast because uh, of the introduction of the AGP that provided the full uh, full processing requirements of the video and the graphics for that matter. Right? So VESA is also another bus but that came and left very, very fast. Right? Of course, the newest uh, bus that we are using right now in our systems are the PCI. I've already talked uh, at length about the PCI card. So you can use it to uh, connect our network cards. You can use it to connect our uh, the modem and so on. So there are a lot of cards that you can use for the PCI. We also had the PC card, right, that was brought to uh, give the plug-and-play room the components that were using plug and play or the hot swappable components it also came but it was quickly phased out 
uh, due to the introduction of the USB. <laughs> so USB came and the PC card left. Of course, we are still using the PC card, but uh, not in all the devices. We also have the AGP, you can see. Right? So AGP was uh, an Intel product that actually gave breath to how the various video subsystems could be uh, handled. So ideally, these are the various types or examples of the system uh, bus. So just to recap what you have looked at is that we have different buses. We have buses that allows us to handle the address system. We also have buses that allows us to handle the data transfer. And we have the main system buses that we have already looked at. Example, we have looked at the AGP. We have looked at the ISA. And of course, we have looked at the PCI uh, cards. So of course, we have also mentioned the other ones that such as the VESA, EI, ISA. We have also looked at the PC card, which are no longer used as per now. So the currently used system bus or the system card is the PCI. So should you find this information are useful, ladies and gentlemen, uh, kindly always feel free uh, to subscribe. All right. Uh, thanks.